everyone, my name's Krista and I hiked half of the Great Divide Trail this year in 2020 on my own and half of it with my husband. This video is to show you what was in my backpack when I was hiking on my own. I hiked over 500 kilometers and I did it for three weeks. So I'll show you the backpack first. This is my backpack. It's pretty big for a thru-hiker backpack. It's a 61 liter Arc'teryx Bora. I knew I wasn't going ultralight, so I knew I needed a bigger pack. It has this hip swivel. It moves up and down and then also swivels like so. And it makes it really distribute the weight well. So it, you don't fatigue as much throughout the day. You can adjust the straps, which is really nice. So for your different torso length. And there's lots of different compartments in here. I really liked having this front compartment for any of my wet stuff, hiking shoes, things like that. For the tent, I had this MSR Hubba Hubba. This tent is actually a two-person tent. It's not an ultra lightweight tent. It has poles in it. I ended up really liking having it on my own because it was more spacious. I could have all my stuff in the tent with me. And I was comfortable because I was inside a domed tent that I could sit up in and the bugs are pretty bad on the Great Divide Trail so it was nice to be able to sit, escape from the bugs, escape from the rain sometimes and this was my sanctuary. For my sleeping pad I have a Thermarest Neo Air which has an R value of 5. It actually is my winter sleeping mat as well. It I think really helped me regulate my temperatures at night because it does get pretty cold in the mountains. So I was really glad to have this one. For my pillow, I picked up a Sea to Summit Eros pillow, premium large. This is an ultralight piece of gear and I loved this pillow. It was so comfortable and as you can see, tiny, super lightweight. This was a game changer, a super cheap, I think it was $2 bug net that just goes over like this, nothing fancy. And this saved my sanity. This is not something thru-hikers typically bring. It is a pack cover. I did end up using it quite a bit and um, I wanted something that I knew wouldn't like rip and break down. Like I know a lot of thru-hikers will put a plastic bag inside their backpack, but because I had multiple layers of um, pockets in my backpack, I just wanted the whole backpack to be covered. For my water purification, I brought this MSR Mini Works water filter. It's heavy. This is not an ultralight hiker's pump at all. Uh, but there was one day, maybe two days, when there was a water source that I don't think another water filtration system could have used. I needed this skinny tube to get into that water source and pump the water out. So although I probably could have survived without it, I was really happy to have it on those really dry and hot days when the water sources were sparse. If you do end up picking up this pump though, it comes with a sponge and this is really important. You have to clean the porcelain filter every day or two. For my stove, I brought an MSR stove. It screws on to these fuel canisters. My longest leg was eight days or nine days and I never used up the medium fuel. Air safety, I have this rope. It's long enough that I can hang it on a really tall branch if I need to. It's 20 meters long. For my pot, I have this titanium ultralight pot by Evernew. Um, so it's this nice, small, super light pot. I think in future, I would probably bring a slightly bigger pot for my mug. I love my Snow Peak Titanium mug. I have the 450 double wall. And I really like this one because I can hold the outside without burning my hands. And it keeps my liquids pretty warm. Really, really love having this mug. Titanium theme. So I have a Light My Fire Titanium Spork here. I really am a fan of the spoon on one side, fork on the other. And for my knife, I just had the one opinal knife. I always like to have my water bladder available so I can drink as I walk. So I would carry typically two liters of water while I was hiking and refill at lunchtime. And in the hot sections, I would drink five to six liters of water. And then as I got nearer to the end, my body got more used to it and it got more cold. I would not quite get through my two liters in the day. So it fluctuated quite a bit. 
For the water filter, I have a Nalgene, so my water filter screws to the top of my Nalgene, which allowed me to pump water, and so sometimes I would fill the whole Nalgene, drink it, fill it again, pour it into my bladder. This handy, this is a bonus item, it's not necessary, but this is my fanny pack, and this was suggested to me by one of my friends to be able to wear it when I was at camp. So when I was at camp alone, a lot of nights I was the only person camping there. So I would put my inReach in here, have my bear spray, have a few other safety items, including my headlamp, so that I always had them with me if I, I had to go far from the tent. So I was happy to have this a lot of nights. Carrying my food, I brought two food sacks, and they're nothing fancy, but I did buy waterproof ones, and it's 10 liters. The second one is Sea to Summit brand. It is eight liters. My longest leg was nine days and 18 liters for my food sacks was always sufficient. I never needed more. For safety, I carried bear spray with me. This actually isn't the exact bear spray I carried. I carried a bigger one. I think a small bear spray is fine, but I would highly recommend buying a bear spray canister like this. It's just a piece of fabric, but to be able to clip your bear spray close by so you can grab it really quickly, I think is really important. This was a purchase I actually made after my first leg alone. I also carried bear bangers, which some through hikers would say is overkill, but I actually use my bear bangers twice, so I'm really glad I brought them. I see bear spray as last resort. Bear bangers, you can use them if you're further away from the bear or the animal. Hopefully not get to the point where you need to use bear spray. This is my toiletries cube. So I always had a mask with me, sunscreen, bug spray, chapstick, one with sunscreen in it and one that is more for nighttime, extra band-aid, toothpaste tablets by Crush and Brush. I bought them at Mountain Equipment Co-op and loved them because they're tabs so they don't have any water in them so they're actually really lightweight and I felt like my teeth felt really clean when I used them. Toothbrush, some tape. This tape was actually a lifesaver. It's athletic tape and I taped it over my band-aid when I had to band-aid my blister, and it just kept the band-aid on. All the band-aids I tried, and I tried a lot of brands, didn't hold the um, adhesive all day with so much walking, so adding three strips of this tape just over the heel, game changer. It's what allowed my blister to heal. I definitely put that in. Dental floss, I floss my teeth every night, and so should you extra lighter. I ended up adding gravel to my kit because I was sometimes getting nauseous. These are really awesome little laundry soaps by Sea to Summit that I used them in town when there wasn't any laundry soap to buy to do my laundry. A Diva Cup. So I use a Diva Cup for my menstrual cycle and I really really liked using a Diva Cup as a through hiker so that I didn't have to pack any tampons. First aid kit. So this is a heavy, thick first aid kit. I am so safety conscious, especially on my own. I did not want to feel like I was not prepared if something went wrong. I have lots of band-aids in here, gauze, polysporin. I have extra tablets for purification of water in case my filter broke. I didn't want to risk that. I also always carry canestin in case I get a yeast infection because that can be awful on trail and if I'm out for nine days, there might not be a place I can leave trail to deal with that, so I always have that with me. Stary strips, more tape, more gauze, a sling, more big band-aids, nail clippers, key. You gotta clip your toenails and your fingernails because you're on trail, like you're living on trail. These are all my meds. I always have Benadryl. Even if you don't think you're allergic to anything, bring Benadryl because you could get stung by a new type of wasp or hornet and have a, an allergic reaction. I always have Advil and Tylenol. I personally find Advil helps more with pain if I'm in pain. Imodium in case of diarrhea. Claritin in case you get any seasonal allergies. Bring Pepto-Bismol tablets to my pack because um, again, I was sometimes getting an upset stomach just I think from all the exercise. Headlamp is a must. I have the Petzl Actic, and my Garmin inReach was amazing. I've been asked a bunch of times, would I do the hike without this and on my own? And I don't think that I would because this Bluetooths to my phone, which allows me to send text messages or emails to my contacts. 
and if I had a problem, I can trigger this SOS button to call for search and rescue and they'll be able to communicate with me through text messages instead of just waiting and wondering if anyone got my message. So I use this thing every single day. Extra batteries for my headlamp, but I ended up with three sets of spares. That's overkill. I wouldn't bring that many, maybe just one spare. This was my battery bank and I actually really liked it. It's called Coplin and we bought it at Best Buy and it has 15,600 milliamp hours and that allowed me to charge my phone three or four times and I was using my phone for GPS and messaging through the inReach and listening to music and sometimes playing a little game at night and I never got to the point where I didn't have enough battery. So this is actually quite heavy, but for me, I felt like it was worth having that. And so to go with that pack, cord to charge my inReach and headlamp, and a cord to charge my phone, and then for when you're in town, you do need the wall adapter so you can charge everything. Really glad I had my headphones for some of those long road walking days when it's boring and hard to motivate yourself. Other through hikers listen to music, listen to audiobooks, podcasts, just to help pass the time on some of those really tough days. Sunglasses. I actually didn't end up wearing my sunglasses very often because, and a lot, I noticed a lot of through hikers stopped wearing their sunglasses, and I think they're just so annoying sliding down your face that. I just ended up not wearing them. Uh, I didn't want to wear metal ring on the trail in case I fell, hurt myself, my fingers started to swell up, and then I couldn't get the metal ring off. So I wore a silicone band by Enzo. For my rain gear, I just brought the rain gear I had. My rain jacket is awesome. I love it. It's by Montaigne. It's a Gore-Tex Pro. I wear it ski touring. I wear it every season, basically, and it was awesome. It was still a really, really great jacket. I love my rain pants that I brought, but I wouldn't recommend them for a through hiker. They are big, heavy, bulky. I barely wore them. I wore them like three days in six weeks. These are bib pants by Arcteryx and they're Gore-Tex Pro as well. Again, awesome pants. I wear them ski touring. Big wide legs are actually not great for through hiking because you're walking quickly and you can trip on them. Like they can get caught together. If I were to do it again, I'd get a cheaper, lightweight pair of rain pants because I barely used them. My signature yellow hat. So I brought two hats. I brought this for the daytime. And then this was the toque that I wore. So this is a wool toque by Mountain Equipment Co-op. Gloves. I wore my gloves not that many times, but I did hike in them a few days and that was really nice. These are just thin gloves with a leather, leather palm by Rab. The stuff sack that I put my clothes in was this stuff sack by Outdoor Research and it is a waterproof sack so it rolls down. It's also a compression sack. And then this is another waterproof sack by Outdoor research again, but this one's not as rigid. This is what I stuffed my big sleeping bag into and again, compressed the sleeping bag down. Okay, moving on to clothes. If you've watched our other vlogs, you're very familiar with my outfits. I had two smart wool shirts. I had a t-shirt, that was great. And this is a smart wool merino 150. Loved this shirt. It's pretty stained now, but it's actually in really good condition considering how much I wore it. And then I had the matching version in long sleeve, so it's called Smart Wool Merino 150, and just long sleeve version. And I hiked in the long sleeve actually quite a bit. Um, what I noticed is I like to wear short sleeve and long pants, or long sleeve shorts. That's what I like to do. I had a third shirt that is an icebreaker t-shirt. It's icebreaker merino cool light. I actually don't think I ever hiked in this shirt. I used it as a towel when I washed my face, when I washed my feet. And then once I got to town, it was actually a nice extra shirt to wear while I was getting my really dirty shirts washed. I could wear this one. I don't think that this was necessary. You probably could cut this extra shirt. These were the shorts I wore. So these are Arcteryx hiking shorts. They're called Creston shorts. 4.5 inches. Love, love these hiking shorts. I wore them a ton at the start. Re dried really quickly, really lightweight. Unfortunately, by the end, I couldn't wear them because they would just fall off me because I lost so much weight. But when I could wear them, I loved wearing them. 
and my hiking pants I absolutely loved. These are Arcteryx as well. They are called Sita Pant Women's. They're awesome. They're so lightweight. This is ultra light stuff right here. Really quick dry. There's mesh here so you can vent out at the back where you tend to get sweaty. And there's zippers at the legs so they're really trim. My puffy is the puffy, my warmest puffy that I have. I use this one ski touring. For the first two weeks I would say it was overkill but I was so glad I had it after that point because it got colder and just to be able to add this for warmth was amazing. So it's a Montane and it's a down jacket. And then I just brought one pair of long johns. So these are my smart wool long johns. They're thicker. I slept in these every single night. I found them really temperature regulating. Um, even on the hot nights, I still wore these because they were just so cozy and I never hiked in them. I just only wore them at camp. So this is my clean dry outfit I wore every night. For underwear, I brought six or seven pairs of underwear. I had a mixture of Smart Wool and Patagonia brand. And to be honest, I loved, I loved the Smart Wool, but I actually really liked the Patagonia. These ones are Patagonia. All of these are lightweight, dried really quickly, didn't get smelly, so they were awesome. I always brought three pairs of wool socks with me. So these were my camp socks. They were Smart Wool, thicker socks that I never hiked in. I only wore them at camp. So I always knew I had a pair, dry pair of socks, which was so key. By halfway, I really needed my feet to be dry. And then these ones would be the thinner smart wools that I would hike in. The actual socks I hiked in, I don't have any more. They got completely worn out, so I had to throw them out. For my sports bras, I had two wool bras. Love wool bras. Brian tried to convince me for so long to get wool bras, and I was like, I already have sports bras, I don't need wool, but I'm so glad I had these because I hiked in this one. This is Smart Wool, Racerback, sports bra. I hiked in it every single day and even by the end, by the time I got to town, it didn't smell at all. It was amazing. So I wore that one hiking every day and then I had this one. I don't, it was nice to have a second one because sometimes I would wear this at camp or if this one, this other one was wet or in town when I was doing laundry. But this one again, like, it was probably a luxury item to have this. For going to the washroom, it's really important on a through hike to have a trowel. This is called the Deuce. 80% of the time, I didn't have an actual outhouse to use when I needed to go. So I used this almost every single day and I'm so glad I had it. This was one of my favorite items I had. It's a Kula cloth. It has a nice cool design on one side and on the other side it's black and this is a pea cloth. I'd never used one before. One of my really good friends bought this for me. You wipe every time you go pee. As a pelvic floor physiotherapist, I understand how important feminine hygiene is, especially long term as you're going through more and more days on trail. So being able to wipe was amazing, but not to have to use so much toilet paper. I would rinse this in the stream, whatever chance I had and hang it on the back of my backpack and I'd often open this part up just to let the sun kind of sterilize it with the UV rays. It was really easy to keep clean, really nice way to keep myself cleaner. And then of course I did have packs of toilet paper so rationed an amount that I would need per section and really important to have your hand sanitizer. My camp shoes are the rubber Birkenstocks. So these again are a bit of a luxury item. A lot of through hikers didn't have them. But by the end of the through hike when we were fording river after river and hiking through mud, it was just a dream to have these at camp to dry out your feet. And not only is it nice, but wet feet long term is a huge reason why you might not be able to finish your hike. My hiking shoes are Solomon Outbound hiking shoes. They they were quite good. I would highly recommend hiking shoes instead of boots. Able to feel the surface you're standing on more. You're able to walk quicker because you're, you can push off the ball of your foot and actually use your calf muscle to its full potential. And they dry out quicker. So again, keeping your feet drier so that your skin stays protected. All of these shoes, they typically come with a thin, not supportive insole at all, and when you're doing long distances, you actually should have some arch support because your little muscles of your feet will fatigue and flatten, and that's when you can get injuries. 
So I got, these are actually custom. They got a little destroyed, but these are custom insoles, a little arch support here that I had in my shoes every single day. Really glad I had these because I didn't have that same foot fatigue that other through hikers I met were reporting that they had. For my sleeping bag, I have this Mountain Hardware Eco AF sleeping bag. It's good to minus nine. I did start with my Mountain Hardware minus 18 sleeping bag and it was too warm. Then I switched to this minus nine sleeping bag. It wasn't quite warm enough for me on my own. If you tend to sleep cold, typically females tend to sleep colder as well. I would definitely go for something around minus 12 or bring an extra layer of warmth of clothing or bring a silk liner. So that's all the gear I carried with me for the solo section of my Great Divide Trail. We will make another video later to show you Brian's gear and then just the little changes that we had when we were hiking as a couple. I mentioned at the beginning that my packing setup is not ultralight. I just wanted to use what we already had. I knew my gear. There are a few things that I do wish I lightened up a little bit. Overall, I'm really glad with what I brought. I was able to hike 25 to 30 kilometers per day on average, which meant it took me six weeks to finish the hike. That's what I was planning on doing, and it was a comfortable amount of weight to carry for those distances. I don't think that you need to go ultra light to be a through hiker. There were also days where I used everything I brought and I was glad to have it for comfort or for safety reasons. Thank you guys so much for following along on this video. If you liked it, please hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe so you can check out all of our videos from the Great Divide Trail, but then also all of our future videos as we keep going with our van build. Thank you.